Welcome to the Exponential Marketing Club, where we talk about everything content marketing, from just getting started with your business, to growing a captivating presence with your website and social media, and on to scaling with Facebook and Instagram advertising for exponential exposure and long-term success. Hi, my name is Sally Hendrick, your host and exponential marketing strategist. Let's get started, y'all. Today, our topic is the real truth of Facebook ads for coaches and consultants with special guest Emma Davis from the United Kingdom. I want to introduce my guest. This is Emma Davis. She lives in the UK. And Emma, I want you to um, tell us a little bit about you, not just about your Facebook amazingness, but also a little bit about you personally so that we can uh, connect here with you. Hi, everyone. Yes, it's really strange to be um, a British accent with all these American accents. It's great. Um, so, yeah, I actually started my first business back in 2002 as um, offering web design. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was making it up as I went along. And I eventually became a web developer. I taught myself to code and I used to hand code, funnily enough, a lot of e-commerce sites. Um, and I had that business for 13 years and I had another couple of businesses during that time as well, completely unrelated. One was running dog agility shows. And if you don't know what dog agility is, it's where they do the jumps and the obstacles, etc. cetera. Um, and then I also built out a dog show entry system online. And then I got to the end of 2015 and I suddenly realized that why I'd been feeling so rubbish for a couple of years and that I was just really fed up and burned out with doing websites. So I closed my business. I'd already closed the other two over time and I closed my business and went and worked in a restaurant for 12 months. <laughs> and then uh, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm a marketing person. I'm an online person. So I came back and my idea was to help people with their digital marketing. And from that, I ended up down the rabbit hole of Facebook ads. And so now I provide a sort of a two way thing is one is I help people grow their online businesses through helping them like through, I don't know, I don't like using the word coaching because people have different interpretations of what coaching is, but sort of a mix of coaching, consulting, mentoring, helping with their strategy. Um, and I also then run Facebook ads for clients. And that's where I'm at now business wise. Personally, I'm in a county called Shropshire in the UK, which is just on the border of Wales. And I'm married and I've got two grown up sons, uh, three dogs and a cat. There we go. Excellent. I love that. And I love the fact that you said you went all the way back to, you know, creating websites and having the courage to say, I had no idea what I was doing, but I just learned it and went through it and, and did that all along. I know that Susan can uh, attest to a similar thing. So can I, Is because when you first get started, I mean, you really don't know how to do things, but you have this idea of like, look, I'm not afraid to click on buttons and to type things in and see what I can do. Um, I can always undo it or maybe screw up and just, you know, tear it up and start over. Um, and, yeah. and that's where a lot of us start. You've got to have that scrappy spirit to be able to move forward in the entrepreneurial world. And I love the fact that you've done that for so many years. And yeah. also that, you know, e-commerce as well. That's really great too. Yeah, the problem I had was WordPress. Everyone wanted WordPress websites and I didn't like it. Um, I, I didn't want to build sites on WordPress because I literally built custom sites uh, for my clients. And they were like, yeah, but WordPress, you can update it. I said, yes, but I build it so you can update it and it's easier and you know you can update the bits you need to update. But <laughs> that was my biggest battle and it just got it just wore me down. <laughs> I, I just can't do this anymore. So uh, yeah, that was the hardest thing, to be honest, is after... 13 years of having a business of saying I mean that was where the courage came it wasn't starting the business it was closing the business um, and part of the reason I wanted to go into more sort of helping people with their business and marketing was that I just always thought if rather than closing the business I mean I needed that I needed to go and have a really sort of um, uh, in-person mundane job that wasn't sort of that taxing on my brain and was away from a computer and that really helped but when I looked back I thought if I'd have I didn't even know about sort of business mentors and coaches and things at the back then, so that was 2015. And I thought if I'd have just found someone who could have helped me pull out of me what I really wanted to do, I could have pivoted rather than done the drastic action of actually closing everything down. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I probably would have taken it more sort of into an online business in terms of uh, courses and, and things like that. So yeah. I love that you mentioned that you didn't really understand what was going on in this coaching world in around 2015. That was me as well. I actually discovered this whole uh, alternative planet going on with Facebook. I, uh, I call it Planet Facebook. I feel like there's this, this entire dimension of people and activities that other people in the real world don't know about if they're not in it and living it. Oh, yes. And it's amazing to me that we can all pretty much make money doing whatever the heck we want to do. And as long as we have a story attached to it and we have, um, you know, proven results and we can find a market that really is in need of this and then we hone our messaging to get them in, um, then we can have a business doing what we want. Now, I wanted to mention, um, I want to say hello to Alex. I know Alex has been messaging me over on email for a couple of weeks saying, hey, when are you doing Clubhouse and this, that, and the other. And so I want to, you know, invite you if you want to, you don't have to, you um, are certainly welcome to come up and say hello to us. I'm going to have Susan say hello and tell us what she does. And then let's dive a little bit into some Facebook ad stuff, Um, you know, maybe share some secrets and tricks that work really well for people who need to uh, sell their expertise online and um, but before we do that Susan feel free to say hello hey Sally nice to meet you Emma hi Donna Um, hi Alex I um, my name is Susan Topman and I am a virtual business manager and consultant and I work primarily with online business owners to assess their admin and tech needs and then help to build a team to provide that support and then supervise that team See, look at you. you. You do this every time. You come in here and you say it so smoothly and so wonderfully, and then we go back to class and it's like, oh, I forgot what I said. <laughs> I wrote it down this time. I wrote it down because I do say it very succinctly in here. It's so funny, isn't it? I love it. I love it. Um, and I love that you're here. Thank you so much. In fact, if you want to start this out by saying, hey, what's a question that's on your mind? that maybe will kick us off into this discussion. What kind of a question are you looking for? Whatever you want, something around Facebook ads. Something about Facebook ads. Okay. Um, And I know that you've addressed this somewhere uh, in the past, but I'm seeing a real lot of it, which is a lot of ads coming up in my feed that almost from a perspective of somebody on the receiving end of the ads, there's no comments, but there's like four, hundred thousand shares and likes tens of thousands of them there is commenting aloud but there's no comments on them what why is that happening and I don't want that to do that because to me it rubs me the wrong way it's like they deleted all the comments yeah um, I'm not really sure if there's some sort of bot that is sharing these posts you know, there, there absolutely could be something like that. And because uh, it doesn't make sense if you've got um, most. First of all, the, the hierarchy of, of the social proof you're going to get on an ad is going to be the likes first or whatever the reactions are first. And okay. then the next number of things that you'll have are probably the comments. So, like, let's say you have 100 likes and you have 20 comments and then you might have five shares. It usually goes in that order, um, but it really depends on the market you're in and what it is that you are promoting. Um, I honestly think that it's ridiculous for people to have um, an unreasonable number of shares if you don't have all the other things, too. If you want to create social proof on your ads, first I'm going to tell you that you don't want to spend a lot of money in this area, but it does work to at least get some sort of, you know, crowdsourcing going. But whenever you set up your ads, you first will set them up for a cheap objective like video views or engagement or something like that. Now, engagement, just to let you know, is going to 
be served by Facebook to the people in your audience who typically touch ads, meaning that they react to them, they comment, or they share. And so Facebook is going to push those ads out to those people who like to touch ads on Facebook and put their, you know, put their stamp on it, if you will. Those are not necessarily the people who want to buy from you or who even want to sign up on your email list. You have to literally change the objective on the ad to be, you know, to get leads or to get purchases if you want to get real customers. And the beauty in being able to do both ways is that you can carry over this ID that goes with your engagement objective ad, carry it over to your conversion ad, and then it will be the same ad with the same social proof on it, but spend the money on the conversion side because that's where you're going to get the real customers. Now, Emma, if you want to hop in and agree or disagree or add something to that. Yes, I've not seen these posts with um, all these sort of shares and things and no comments, but I suppose, yeah, the answer could be for some bizarre reason that people are, the, the owner of the ads are going through and deleting the comments um but why you'd want to do that unless they're all derogatory I, i'm not entirely sure so i i've not seen that i've not experienced it i don't know i don't know what that, that's all about but yeah i mean to be honest i i used to do a lot of creating ads for my the conversions for my clients and running them initially to get um engagement on them to build up that social proof because i always always create control ads and then use the um the post id from the ads to build up that social proof because having that social proof triggers other people when they see it and they think well if other people are reacting and commenting i need to pay attention um and i did used to do that but it's, to be honest i i haven't done that for a long long time i tend to just go straight for the conversions and i find that the i get enough social proof building up but then saying that some you know most of my clients are actually spending quite a bit of money so it's um they're going out spending a lot of money to get those conversions so it's to be seen by a lot of people in the first instance so i suppose if you've got a smaller budget it might help to get that uh, to do the engagement ads first because obviously they'll be a lot cheaper to get results for and build up that social proof before then running them as conversion ads definitely yeah it can can work really really well I agree with you on this. When you've got a client who's spending a lot of money on ads, they typically don't need to do that step. But I will tell you, because I know you and I were talking uh, or chatting in the messenger the other a couple weeks ago about um, coaching people to run their own ads. Whenever you do that, you're going to find that these people are very t uh, skeptical and very slow to spend their money on advertising, afraid that they are putting the, their dollars in this huge abyss that they know nothing about. And so what happens is they have no audience yet. They have no list. They have no social proof. They have hardly anybody liking their pages or their Instagram or whatever it is or even trafficking their website. And so when they're at that stage, doing those less expensive ads to get a little bit of social proof going is really, really necessary for them, just for them. First of all, it's not just to show people that, oh, maybe this is something worthwhile to look at or to click on, but also it gives them a little bit of a sense of confidence as well that like, oh, oh, somebody actually liked my my content <laughs> it gives a little confidence yeah. boost <laughs> yeah I, I completely agree and to be honest I think um I mean I've just I've got a new client well I say new we've been together about six weeks now and I'm actually waiting for her to finish off um, an evergreen webinar and then um but in the meantime because again like you say she didn't have uh the the audience size and so on and so forth so i said look you've got some great content on your page let's just do some engagement and video view ads and i also was running blog post ads and um, to a specific blog post very related to what her webinars going to be about exactly and, um, yeah and so we were doing those and they brilliant it's great results but what i was getting to there is that um that people don't seem to do that as much nowadays i mean it's very rare I anyway see ads in my newsfeed that aren't lead generation, you know, aren't conversion style ads. And I'm thinking people are missing a trick here because 
it's not just about yes we want to spend most of our money on getting people onto our email list into our webinars etc etc because we want to make sales but if you've got like a few dollars being spent just building up a constant awareness and audiences around your business as well that's just only going to because it doesn't cost much that's the whole point and it's just going to keep building up and i tell you it's worked really really well i mean that we're actually running some lead gen ads for a, a, a basic PDF download that my client has got, and we're getting like an average of twenty nine cent leads. It's like it's amazing. So. That's insane. What's the what's the industry for that? Uh, she is um, I don't know what you call her. I suppose a, a health and wellness type coach. So uh, um, the the yeah, and um, I mean I've never seen. I normally with like I'm looking at one to two dollars for a, a, you know a basic lead magnet style download um, ad. But yeah, I I couldn't believe it. And she helps women over 40 who are um, perimenopause or menopause or postmenopause or that sort of thing to basically clear, yeah, change their sort of habits and lifestyle (laughs) and eating and and all these things. So yeah. The hormones and everything that go with it. I might might need her number, so. (laughs) Yeah, I need it as well, don't worry. Yeah, I'm not paying close attention. Uh, yeah, I was, I was quite blown away by the results we're getting to, and such to such a point where she's just had to upgrade her active campaign account, which I didn't even cross my mind because we went in ten days um, to eleven hundred um, people on her list. So, wow, cool. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, long may this continue. Thank you very much, Facebook. Alex, I'm trying to add you because um, I saw that you sent a. A notification to come up look on your screen see if it's giving you a um, see if it's giving you a little button to push to come on up and accept the invitation and then you can come up and speak all right so uh, there you are uh, tell us uh, hi hi can you guys hear me yeah oh, okay good I wasn't sure because I don't see that little speaker thing but first of all Sally thank you so much for um, getting me an invite into this wonderful new app and um i uh been listening so far um and yeah i think uh i i would be a a person that you know is struggling and bootstrapping her way through online courses for inventors i'm in the invention space um which i find very hard for nailing finding the right profile person because anybody can be an inventor and there's not a lot of information about inventing so i can't say well okay uh who takes uh, magazines for inventing you know there's just not that kind of stuff out there so it's very hard for me to nail down how to reach out to my particular profile of people that i'm looking for and that's why I've been kind of skittish of doing Facebook ads because I feel like I'm just, you know, blasting it out there into the universe. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your business, a little bit more detail, and maybe we can help you uh, create some definitions around uh, your client and what it is you're trying to get them into. Yes, yeah, certainly. So you all have watched Shark Tank, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what happened is, especially after Shark Tank, there's a lot of people out there say, oh, I have an idea for a product or I have an idea for a concept. And um, this was about six years ago, it was almost seven years ago. Um, I was one of those people that had an idea, had quite a few ideas. And so I, I found this one company online. It's called Invent Right. Um, and I learned how to license products, how to develop products and license products from them. And uh, then I started coaching for them. I coached for them for about three years. Then I decided to take this on my own, you know, and go out and do other things. And uh, had so many people contacting me because I did have the branding of this company on my back, right? So, so many people reaching out to me saying, oh, please, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? And so they didn't have any money, of course. So I said, okay, well, let me, let me put some online courses together, which I'm, I'm really enjoy doing. So I created these online courses, created Invent Insight, which is my, my uh, company founded that. And so it's people that you find that just like, 
people that you know were in the garage and said, oh my goodness, the rack should hang like this, or trip over the hose and say, you know, there's a better way to do this. There's a better, better mouse trap. In in and in, in all kinds of industry, kitchen is very big. Pet is very big. So there are forums. Um, I find that interestingly enough, I find that LinkedIn is. I get a lot more lift off of LinkedIn um, than I have really been trying to find my footing on Facebook. And I know Facebook would be good. As a matter of fact, I just got a client the other day off of Facebook, but. I just don't understand Facebook that much. I, I really need to dig in there and, and, and figure out because I really do want to do some advertising. But basically, it's anybody, anybody. I mean, any one of you tomorrow could be driving and say, oh, you know, if the windshield did this, this instead or the windshield wiper had this on it, it would be better. Well, and that's, so, that's the whole, you know, that's what all invention over time, there's in, invention and innovation that you know, changes the world that progresses us along. But what, one thing I want to ask, though, is what is the content online that you have that is available for people to get? Like, do you have a website and do you have a blog? Or give us a little bit of insight on that. Certainly. So I, um, I actually started with a partner that, um, that got very sick and couldn't continue with me. And, of course, he was the back-end guy, right? He was the, the wizard, the SEO guy, the website builder so I found myself floating around the ocean by myself and uh, so I found Kajabi and I said okay I can figure this out right and this kind of is what Emma was saying it's not easy so I started that and I learned how to create the website and I built the courses I put it up there and um, I start my blog I'm, I'm doing Facebook Facebook is my big my big kahuna because um, my competitor is in Facebook. My competitors are in Facebook. And none of them really have an online, well actually one guy kinda has an online thing. But anyway, um, so I, I've been working on Kajabi, my site, and then um, my Facebook. But I need to get my blog, uh, my blog, needs help do you know well the blog is great because it, it can help you create a lot of macro content and then your social media content can be born from that uh -huh. um, you basically take a macro piece of content which is going to be a written piece an audio piece or a video piece <clears throat> excuse me a video piece you have those bigger pieces that are uh, larger chunks of information deeper dives if you will um, but you have to have the bite bite-sized pieces that lead people to those macro pieces and then you have to understand that you know there's a pipeline like Kajabi says pipelines same thing when you say funnels um, you have to have a path that your customers are going to take to create that like you know that no like trust factor so that they will lead to your products and then come in to get to know you now it's going to be a lot of different ways of doing this no two pipelines or funnels are alike everybody has their preferred way of producing content their preferred way of you know preferred social media places whatever that may be but there are ways to optimize every step along the way which is going to be the technical back-end bits that you are probably you know wondering how in the world do I make these things sticky and that's that's where the stickiness comes in and all that means is that if someone is following you around and looking at your content and then they're going to your website, you need to understand the pattern, the pathway that they are taking to get there and then how many people are actually moving forward and where you can create those little trap doors, if you will, mm -hmm. for people to fall into so that they're in the space where you're ready to sell to them. And that's the whole marketing aspect of everything from the digital side. You have have to go through that customer journey of building those relationships now you could add in a Facebook group you could have a LinkedIn group which I don't think the LinkedIn groups I, I'm you know 
forget, you know, kick me if I'm wrong. I don't know if the LinkedIn groups really go anywhere. I have no idea. Um, but Facebook groups can be really um, helpful. Connecting that to a Facebook page, um, you know, using Instagram um, where you want to. I like Instagram now. I didn't used to, but now I'm really, really, really getting into it. Um, but those types of things are something that you've got to be able to sit down and really strategize what makes the most sense for people to, with the pathway for them to take and to know how to drop out that information to them that is just enough for them to have a little success or a little bit of taste of what you're doing before they move into the next thing of actually buying a course and then understanding how to price those things out and how to disseminate them out to people. Um, that's going to be your biggest challenge in all of this. It's everybody's biggest challenge <laughs> before you ever go into dropping money on advertising that maybe doesn't really have a place to lead them that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I, I started um, with my YouTubes now. Um, I'm putting together a cheat sheet and or a you know a checklist depending on what the the tutorial is about so I'm going to try that this week I'm going to put a link I'm doing a pipeline in Kajabi and then there will be a quick landing page for them to go to they can uh, download this document and I just want to see what happens because I'm my YouTube's doing pretty good uh, my, I, I realize now that my, my website really needs to be, it's a too, it's got too much going on. It needs to be simplified. So I really need to start working on that as well. Can but I it's the, as well that I was, that, sorry, Alex, I was just going to agree with that. I, because you were saying you think your clients are, your potential clients are on Facebook. I really, need, as I'm thinking, you're saying there's not much out there with your niche your industry I really do think a Facebook group would be brilliant for what you do and who you help I mm -hmm. think having that community of people being able to bounce ideas off each other and get feedback I think that would be absolutely amazing and so if you decided to go that route I mean yes it takes work um, and you've got to you know make sure that you're up for committing that time to, to maintain and, and keep the group active and engaged However, what you could do, if you decide to go that route, what you could do with your lead magnets, for example, is when they get to the thank you page and you send them your little email sequence as well, include it in there, is you can say to them, you know, you've downloaded this now, why not come and join my Facebook group? So you're yeah. not only building your list, but you're encouraging them into your Facebook group. And then, as I say, you, you, you always need some sort of, even if it's only two or three emails, you need some sort of email sequence like a welcome sequence after people opt in for your lead magnet so the first thing they're going to get is obviously the email with a link to download it and then give them a, you know a bit of value spread out over one like a few days maybe a week and a few follow-up emails and maybe giving them some extra tips and when you get to blogging you could actually link out to obviously relevant blog posts and things like that but again going back to the facebook group obviously you could say you know if you if you want extra help if you've got an idea you want to get feedback on etc join my Facebook group so you know you've got the two-way street of doing it there getting them onto your list and getting them into a group and if you can build up that group I think that would be a great idea yes um I was going to ask add one more thing to this too Alex if you set up a Facebook group the other thing that's going to happen is that Facebook is going to automatically kind of internally advertise that for you as well and people yeah. will run across it and if they do any searches they're going to run across it so you make your title something very obvious like inventors idea incubator or something like you know something really obvious that oh we're at the very beginning idea stage of this because you are the hero who comes in and lifts them out of the idea stage into something real mm -hmm. now uh this uh, might be a kind of a dumb question but what's the difference between like i have facebook my facebook right that i've had for many years and i've got all my friends from the last industry was because I, I worked as a general manager here in Las Vegas uh, for a, a tour operator for 12 years before I got into this whole invention stuff and um, so I so I have but I have so I have my regular Facebook me and then I have a Facebook page invent insight and I also have a Facebook page for one of my inventions so 
a group is different. Oh yeah. So okay. basically, when when you talk about where you have friends, and hey Kimberly, just saying hey real quick, <laughs> I'll bring you up in a sec. Um, when you when you when you have the friend space, that's called your Facebook profile. That has nothing to do with business. It's not going to give you any leverage whatsoever, except just maybe you know just people maybe know what you do that sort of thing and you can you can put in your um in your about area like um you can actually link to your facebook business page so your inventor's business page whatever i can't remember what you said that was called invent insight okay invent insight so that can be linked on your facebook profile and make it public so that people can actually find you and then they can click over and find your page um, and then you go over to the business page that's where you're going to have all the leverage when it comes to gaining followers gaining uh, tracking of people who follow the content that comes out of that page because facebook allows um, the uh, facebook makes it so we can create audiences of the people who touch our content over there um, it also gives you opportunities to link your Facebook business page to a Facebook group that you create and then you've got an opportunity for people to join your group right from your Facebook page there's like a call to action button there where they could come join the group or if you want them to go do your download instead you can do that um, but that's where you're going to be able to build up foundation in audience and that's really important. So it's interesting because uh, um, I, I get a lot of people asking to be friends with me on Facebook. <coughs> and I can tell they're, you know, inventor peeps. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, how, I guess I connect with them and then just turn, you know, how, where do I have them connect? I mean, how do I say to them, I really don't want you on my personal page, but uh, give them the link to the group and say this is the best place to connect with me is through okay. this group you can also say here's my Facebook page go there then click the button to sign up for my um, you know mem free membership into my group something okay. like that and then the other thing you can do is that when you set up the group there are settings that you can create so that when people come into the group First of all, you need to have some group rules, you know, to some guidelines for behavior in the group. You don't want a bunch of people spamming their products. Um, and then also you want to have maybe an entry question that, that asks them for their email so that you can capture their email and then get them into your list which may be you literally going to your landing page and entering their information yourself so that they get the, they get the uh, download that you have for them as an introduction to your membership. Okay. Okay, so um, Kimberly, did you want to come up and say anything? You're, you're welcome to. Um, I want to make sure I welcome you, Kimberly. Kimberly's in my group, and, um, and we, we, we're constantly having these types of discussions, all of us. I just uh, say one other thing that keeps like it's just going through my mind for Alex for a group is there's all within the settings Alex there's also the um, different style of group so you've got a public group which means anyone can see it not only join it but without joining they can see all the comments and the posts I normally advise against that so you would want to set it up as um, a private group so that people can keep obviously everything they're saying within that group and no one can see it unless they become a member of that group which i think definitely with inventions would be uh, imperative exactly yeah, thank you yeah and there's also another setting to have it either visible or hidden if it's visible that means that people can see that it exists and see that there are other people there but they can't see what's happening inside and then there's the uh the hidden group which is like a secret group I don't necessarily recommend that. It's it's harder to get people into those secret groups. There's some weird nuance with Facebook, and I can't remember. I just don't even deal with it anymore. But at one point, you had to be friends with people to get them into a secret group. Um, I don't know if that's the case anymore, but it's not findable or searchable if it's hidden. So I would want it to be visible but private. So there's two settings there. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much for that. 
You're welcome. And then when you do get ready to run ads, one of the things that you'll want to do is to have those a few of those things patched together, ready to go, test it, make sure it works, and then have people start going to it and signing up, people that you already know, you know, to go through your funnel, if you will. And you don't necessarily have to have something ready to sell right away. You really could just set this up as a community building funnel, if you will, for the time being until you're ready to pitch an offer to them. But you'll have their email addresses. You will have them in the Facebook group. You will have opportunities to get in front of them again and again. And then that's when you can go into starting to create some of those ads and to push them out there. Um, when you get into ads, there's so many technical little bits to click on and to understand. And just one thing I want to caution you with is that if you boost a post from your page where it just says, hey, boost this post and then click this button and here you go, I'm going to tell you right now that that's not going to necessarily give you the best results. That is going to push your money out there, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to control what's happening. So I would say hold off a little bit on that until you really understand the type of content you want to put out there. Um, and then when you're ready, I do have uh, a very good system that will help teach you what to do with that. If you want to, you know, let me know. I'll be happy to send you the information on that. Um, but, you know, understanding how people are going to come to you and how you're going to uh, create that community is going to be really important before you do anything. Yeah, that, that sounds really good. And, I, you know, that boost button, I always look at it and go, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I know, I know. I, I, I'm one of those people who like to over-prepare, um, and that's probably why it's taking me so long to get all this done. But, um, yeah, I will definitely uh, ping you and see what we can, we can do. <laughs> I call that Facebook tax. It goes there, and you just never know what happens after that. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to use that Facebook tax. Yeah, Facebook tax. <laughs> so, anybody else have any questions? Um, Susan, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Or, Kimberly, do you have any questions around Facebook ads? Or, um, you know, anything anything else? Um, I, I don't have anything specific. Um, I know that when I tried to do my most recent ad, I wasn't, oh, can I change the end date? Like for an ad for my husband's business, I had one that was recurring and it has all kinds of proof, you know, social proof on it, like hundreds of comments. And I went to rerun it again, but it has ended and I lose everything. No, you don't lose everything. Like if it ended already and it doesn't allow you, I think they just started allowing you to extend it because I did it for my husband as well. But if you can't extend that end date, just duplicate that ad set and, you know, start it again. But make sure that you are using the unique post ID. Um, what's it called? Select post ID instead of creating um there's a button that says create ad on the ad level page if yeah. you will click that drop down and choose use existing post under that there'll be like enter post id you will use the post id from facebook now that's inside the face the mad science course in my okay. there's a lesson that's specifically about keeping social proof on an ad so just go okay. get that I will do that. Thank now, you. You cannot change anything about the specific ad itself. The button, the copy, the image, the video, whatever it is, that has to stay the same. You can't change it or it starts over. But if you're just wanting to run the same thing again, just grab that post ID and pop it in there and good to go. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, what about you, Kimberly? What's going on? Hey, just always uh, happy to join in when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come to the, uh, the the co-working this morning. No, I was busy listening to something else, and I'm like, oh, I'm missing the book. We're working on it. <laughs> oh, well. I was working, putting proof source on my website, playing with it to see what I want to do with it, and... Um, Speaking of social proof, that's going to be the proof, that's the proof that you can put on your website 
there's all kinds of companies that do it. But basically, you add some code to your site that allows for your Facebook reviews to pop up on your pages. Um, Susan, the funny thing is, is I went to test it, and your review on my Facebook page was the first one that popped up. <laughs> yeah, you can add Google reviews. You can have those automatically pipe in. And then you can have anytime somebody buys something or signs up for something, it'll be like, hey, so and so just got this or so and so just got that. And so it really can help encourage people to go ahead and click that button because they know other people are doing it too to either buy something or, um, you know, or to just sign up for a free resource. Yeah, and if anybody doesn't want to figure out the tech on that, I have a tool that uh, puts up testimonials on your website. In fact, if you go to my website, you can see it at work. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Which one do you use? Um, it's, it's not a common one. It starts with an M. <laughs> okay. I've gone in there for a long time. It just once you set it up, you don't even have to go in there again unless you have a new testimonial to add in. And uh, but yeah, I mean, I can um, if you know, just uh, message me on Insta if you if you want. If you yeah. Want that set up and kind of set it up and forget it, or just pop in. Kimberly, you know, send us me and ask. I'll put. I want to shout out for you for a second. Kimberly knows every tool that ever was <laughs> invented online I think because Kimberly you're in this group where a lot of these software developers are pitching their new software um, some of them will go out on AppSumo deals some of them are just their own deals and they're pitching through this community and Kimberly manages this group for someone else who kind of fell into managing these uh, these types of offers and so I'm always like okay what's a tool that does this but doesn't do that and then only cost this much and Kimberly goes hold on let me go find that for you <laughs> oh that's wonderful yeah yeah it's really great I love tech I super love tech I don't manage that group anymore I have oh you don't I didn't know you didn't but you're still in there yeah I'm still in there because I love the tech <laughs> cool see uh, the tech is what for me. <laughs> I'd want to buy everything, but I can't go in that group at all, ever. I had to turn off the notifications, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Alex? So the tech is my Achilles tendon, and, you know, AppSumo, I just found out about that, that thing, and um, it's dangerous. I have to lock my credit card up and put it away <laughs> because it's like, oh, look, we have this. It's only $39 for the lifetime of the product. And it'll do this, this, and this for you. And now I'm at a point, probably because I'm older, but I go in there and I'm like, I get an email from, you know, what was the one I just bought? I forget what it was. And I'm like, what is that? I'm like, oh, my God, that's the program I bought. <laughs> oh, I've got so many of those that I'm like, I know I have a login for this, but I can't remember the name of it. And I just, I try not to do it too much. Um, but just so you know, on Monday, I'm actually having a discussion with another lady from the UK named Sally Wadwa. And she is, um, she talks a lot about marketing tools at every stage of business. And so we're going to kind of going to go through some of the main ones for people like us, like who are serving uh, coaches, consultants, small business entrepreneurs, and uh, we're going to go through those types of tools. So that may help as well. That's going to be on Monday and I am going to record it as well. I'm really trying to expand how I'm using this clubhouse opportunity because I don't want to lose the content that's here that's the frustrating thing that it, you don't have the ability to record unless you set up your own little you know system and I've figured finally figured that out yesterday um, so I want you guys I want to invite you to uh, be able to get a copy of this I am going to put it on my website in a blog post and it will be labeled with Clubhouse. So just so you know that that is going to be coming uh, at some point. I might even make it into a podcast, which Kimberly actually manages my podcast on another site that I have. Um, Susan is excellent at web services, website, all of the those types of things. Emma's great with Facebook ads. I know Facebook ads. I teach a group 
um, around con you know content that really convinces people to take action. Um, I'm opening up a new membership with that. I have a Facebook ads agency and I teach go deep with people on sales funnels, which is going to be the, that's the hardest part pe for people to get right. Um, but it definitely needs to be done. So if anybody has anything else they want to say, let's do that real quick and then wrap up in the next two or three minutes and make sure let's all follow each other. Okay. Because I want to make sure that we connect. I hate to miss people and then not see see them anymore, right? I'm, I think I'm already following everybody. Oh, yeah, I know I'm following you, Alex, because I sent you the inv invitation to here. I think I'm following everybody. How do, you, how do you do that? You click on their face and a little menu will pop up oh, and you can follow. Awesome. Yeah, you can also okay. click on someone's face and then go see their profile to see all the goodies they've got. Oh, listed. I see. Awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> you might even, you know what, you might even, sorry, <laughs> you might even start your own little clubhouse club for inventors just to start that conversation. But And then you lead them to your lead magnet, to your Facebook group, all of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, and that's why I like this app, because you know what? I got to tell you, it's really hard when you get older, and, you, and you're doing a YouTube video, and you have to edit it. Okay, so when you have to edit a video, it takes longer than creating the video, and you have to look at yourself and hear yourself and look at yourself and hear yourself. I'm telling you what. I'm going with Clubhouse from now on. I'm po I think I'm going to get into <laughs> podcasts and forget the YouTube. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. That's exactly why I've got a podcast and I like Clubhouse. Don't have to worry about how I look, whether I've got a hair and makeup done or anything. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, listen, ladies, let's wrap this up. I'm so happy we got to do this together. It's been good deep diving with you and sharing some tips on Facebook ads and sales funnels and all the good stuff. So let's connect again. Let's follow each other's clubs. If we have them, you know, become members, whatever, click on those buttons and just snoop around and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks, Sally. Thank you, Sally. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sally, for having me on here. Sure thing. Thanks for coming. Nice All right. to meet you, Emma. And to you, too. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening today. Now head over to sallyhendrick.com forward slash clubhouse to participate in our live and recorded events. Thanks for being here.